Okay. So I'm going to do my best <laughs> to explain this again. Um, there were some questions on how to do the elevator floor um, in the last video where you're lying down doing working on lower back one of the things was thinking about the elevator the elevator doors sorry closing and lifting the pelvic floor as you would an elevator um, and it's hard to explain I know because you're you're horizontal but you're trying to actually I'm queuing vertically but sometimes that seems a little weird um, so we're gonna do it vertically just like an elevator is okay so you're sitting in a comfortable position and your legs are just crossed you could do this in a chair also with your um, knees bent and your feet on the floor and you want to first thing do is pull your belly in but also feel like you're pulling your back in so from the side it would look like this so you pull your belly in but you also want to feel like you're lifting and lengthening out of your low back okay so you're not just sitting there and just like oh, pulling your belly in and having everything you want to feel like your whole body just lifted without raising your shoulders so you've got that nice kind of pulling in so imagine I don't know if you've ever been in an elevator that doors open in the front and the back I, I have you want to feel that those doors just close at the same time. So you've got that nice lift here. Same thing with your waistline. You want to feel like everything, whole thing is just lifting you up nice and tall. You still want to be able to breathe though. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people do chest breathe. Most people do. So that's usually not a problem for people. But for those people that do belly breathe the way we're supposed to, um, this can be a challenge. They want to hold their breath. So what you want to do is try to breathe up here in the rib cage, and it's a little bit of a chest breathing, it's a Pilates thing, but try to make sure that you are breathing, that you're not holding your breath or creating tension, okay? So we have our elevator doors have closed, we're tall, we have a long kind of uh, cylinder, and we're very tall here. So you can try and relax everything else and keep that going. All right, so thinking of the pelvic floor, so right down at your pelvis, and I know that for the video, I, I, I'm waiting for my tripod to be delivered, so I do apologize, because I'm using chairs and props to kind of hold things up. Um, <laughs> so, but here's my pelvic floor. This is where I'm sitting, okay? Think of my hand, okay? And then you want to think of that pelvic floor, which is the very base, it's where your pubic bones are, it's where you're sitting, it's your bottom, it's what you're sitting on, okay? not scientifically, but just think of your base where you're sitting, okay? Think of that for a moment. Feel that if you're sitting down watching this video, feel that. All right, you've got your cylinder, you're pulling everything in. When you take an inhale, you wanna feel like you're lifting that pelvic floor up and you wanna feel like that pelvic floor lifted just a little bit into the base of your pelvis, into your whole pelvic region below your navel, okay? We're talking this much, we're talking maybe an inch, maybe not even, you just wanna feel like you took a breath and inhale and that lifted into that space. Feel like your pelvis, I've heard it get described as like a flame and you've lifted the flame up. If that works for you, great. If you don't like visualization, just forget about that, okay? But find that. Then on your next inhale, you're gonna lift up even higher and you're gonna think of that um, lifting coming towards your navel. Is it literally going there? No, it's not, but you wanna feel that you're pulling all those muscles in so that that is lifted. So I can feel all that right now, I've got that going on. Then you take another inhale and you lift, go up to the third floor and you wanna feel like your pelvic floor has just lifted to above your navel. So you really wanna feel all these muscles have lifted. You can hear I'm having trouble breathing and talking at the same time because I've got all that engaged. Then you take an exhale, we're gonna release from above the navel to right about at the navel. Then we're gonna exhale and release to below the navel. And then we're gonna let it go. We've kinda of let all that go. Now we're gonna still keep the elevator doors closed and this, the cylinder, kind of all that's pulled in, but we haven't lifted the pelvic floor. So we'll try to do it in real time now. Okay, so we've got all this pulled in, elevator doors are closed. We're relaxed through the shoulders and we're able to breathe, letting the rib cage expand and contract. Okay, so we take our inhale, we lift our pelvic floor into our pelvis, we hold. Inhale again, lift up to the navel, hold. Inhale again, lift up above the navel, hold. Exhale, release to the navel, hold. Exhale, release below the navel, hold. Exhale, release the pelvis. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, lift into the pelvis, hold. Inhale again, lift to the navel, hold. 
Inhale again, lift above the navel, hold. So it should be feeling really tight right now. You're feeling, ah. And then exhale to the navel, hold. Exhale into the pelvis, hold. Exhale, release. Don't let it all go. Keep it, keep it tight, keep it tight. One more time. Inhale, lift the pelvic floor up into the pelvis, hold. Inhale again, lift up to the navel, hold. Inhale again, lift above the navel, hold. Exhale, release to the navel, hold. Exhale to the pelvis, hold. And exhale the pelvic floor, release. So in the other video, we were on our back trying to do that. So it's the same movement, even though you're lying on your back. I know people want to maybe lift. When I say lift, they want to lift their pelvis off the ground or whatever. It's not. It's taking that pelvic floor, your pelvic floor, the very base, what you're sitting on, and lifting all those muscles up and lifting that pelvic floor. So if you think of your pelvic floor, it basically is like a hammock from, you know, your pubic bone past, you know, to your, to your back bone, it, it entails, well, let's just be honest here, it entails, you know, the perineum and the navel or the, uh, the anus and, you know, your, your genitals. It's all of that. And what happens is, let's be honest, some of us after we have babies, that starts to collapse. It starts to, to fall. That hammock is getting really, really loose. So we want to be able to use those abdominal muscles to help lift all that up again. Um, when you're able to kind of control and lift that and use those muscles correctly, that's also going to help your low back. We want to be able to use those abdominal muscles to lift everything up. And that's why the elevator door is closing and that spine sandwich is important. We want to be able to not just have our belly hanging out and our pelvic floor dropping, which then tilts our pelvis so that our low back gets really crunchy and really short. If we can put our pelvis back in neutral, pull our abdominals in, find that spine sandwich so that we've got that um, I want to say cylindrical, a cylinder, <laughs> we have that cylinder so that everything is pulled in. It keeps us much more even and it keeps the pressure out of our low back. Then if in turn we can start to pull up that pelvic floor and you can drive like this, you can go to work like this, you can sit in your office chair like this. Do we? No. But it's something to think about. If you think about it, practice doing that. Um, and that just kind of helps lift everything up. Um, it's sort of like doing your kegels, but not really. And as most of us women know, doing our kegels alone really doesn't do that much. But when we're talking about lower back health, this can be helpful just for that awareness, okay? The whole kegel thing, that's a whole different video. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, this is a great way to kind of work on just really being aware of our low back and how we carry ourselves in that internal awareness and um, all the subtle things. And that's what underdog wellness is. It's not about necessarily working out and being healthy all the time. Um, it really is about those little subtleties. There are a lot of people I know that they kick ass at working out. They work out all the time. They lift weights. They do marathons. They do boot camp. They do Tabata. They also do yoga and Pilates, which is a little bit more in my vein. Um, but a lot of them work out in a way they're not really aware of things. And then they come to my Pilates class and I think, oh, what a hot mess, because they don't really know the subtleties about working. They just kind of throw their bodies around. Doesn't mean they're not fit. Doesn't mean they don't work hard. Absolutely they do. But at Underdog Wellness, what we're trying to do is really get people so that they understand the subtlety and how to keep our bodies healthy throughout the rest of our lives, keeping the range of motion as much as possible and keeping ourselves really aware of how we stand, how we carry ourselves, how we sleep, all that stuff so that we can stay as healthy as possible and we don't one day have our body break down because we've been beating the hell out of it for years. Um, so I hope you'll continue to watch and um, I hope my videos get better. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Bye.